pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. But I was told it was somewhere online at 1.36 a.m. and we voted at 1.39 a.m. This is no way to run a government. Maybe there's a connection between why we can't solve our problems anymore and the complexity of the issues we face. Everywhere you look today, things seem to be getting more complicated. The U.S. tax code is now 74,000 pages, and the more you look at the Affordable Health Care Act, the more it starts looking like the tax code. Businesses are struggling to keep up, to comply with new regulations, to stay on top of new technologies, to understand a fast-changing, complex global economy. Whether we're talking about the energy industry, healthcare, manufacturing, finance, government, social service, education or retail, every industry and person is under siege. According to Eric Schmidt, the former CEO of Google, uh, there were five exabytes of information created by the entire world between the dawn of civilization and 2003. Now that same amount is created every two days. No wonder we're sort of overloaded. But this phenomenon isn't just happening in the United States. People are struggling with consequences of data overload and complexity everywhere. Rebecca Costa is the world's leading expert on complexity and collapse. In her book, the Watchman's Rattle, she contrasts the vast complexities that fill our lives and modern world. In that order, and I can improve my diagnosis. And try to understand if there is some pattern that would allow us to anticipate whether we were taking steps toward some collapse. Just take a look at how hard it's become to separate dangerous rebel factions from potential future allies. And what about climate change or overfishing the ocean? Can any one country make an impact if the others don't care? How about complex financial instruments, which experts admit they can't understand and yet continue to invest in? Or new medical discoveries and drugs, which doctors would have to invest 160 hours a week reading about in order to stay current? How are currencies valued today and what's the right thing to do about immigrants who've lived in our country for 50 years and what's the best way to educate our children in today's fast-changing world. With everything going digital, where does my right to privacy begin and end? And how does a company secure its data? It seems everywhere we turn, the complexities of our circumstance is growing. Our ability to understand what is happening is on the brink. Are we really equipped to use a smartphone that lets us store 200,000 apps? But what exactly is complexity? And more importantly, why is it dangerous? Rebecca Costa explains We're talking about why. two different clocks here. One clock that moves in million year increments, that's the clock of evolution. 151 years ago, Charles Darwin discovered that evolution is very slow. And even if we need new features, for example, when I'm in my car, I need a couple of new appendages. I can't drive, drink my coffee, plug in my iPod and text and, you know, and I need those extra appendages, but they're not coming for billions of years. In that same way, our brains cannot necessarily adapt and develop new features in order to deal with the complexity that's changing in picoseconds. In a nutshell, as complexity grows, my odds of picking the right solution diminish. There are more wrong solutions than right ones, and every second the number of wrong ones is growing. But that's not all. The more complicated laws and codes become, the more difficult compliance becomes and oversight too. In short order, things start to feel overwhelming and they begin to unravel. But not for everyone. A successful company like General Electric can hire buildings of the top tax accountants and lawyers to find ways to legally avoid paying taxes despite being one of the richest corporations in the world. But where does that leave the fellow who self-files? Well, complexity makes it likely he will pay the highest tax bracket he falls under. The fact is, complexity favors the most resourceful in society, and history also shows that this creates predatory conditions. Companies and individuals who do not adapt 
to complexity are destined to fail. Costa's international bestseller, The Watchman's Rattle, has been compared by critics to the early works of Alvin Toffler, Nesbitt, and Thomas Friedman because for the first time she reveals how complexity produces failure, failure in industry, companies, governments, and individuals. And she's the first to describe the three symptoms to watch out for. First comes gridlock. Leaders and experts know what their most dangerous problems are and have solutions at their disposal, but they become unable to act. The greatest nation on earth cannot keep conducting its business by drifting from one manufactured crisis to the next. Second, there is a mass confusion between what is an empirical fact and what is an unproven belief. Empirical data cannot be understood, accessed in time, or put to use so it is systematically replaced by rhetoric, beliefs, faulty logic, and the spell of charismatic experts. I would not like them here or there. I would not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them. Sam, I am. Third, policy begins to be shaped by unproven beliefs and as a result, grows increasingly irrational and irrelevant. The last stage is collapse. According to Costa, Things have become too complicated. They're too complex for the, the rate at which the brain has evolved to. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, you're going to hit some kind of impasse. Costa gives examples of this pattern going as far back as the Mayan, Roman, and Khmer empires and leading up to our present day problem. But more importantly, for the first time, she offers individuals, corporations, leaders, and organizations new strategies, tools, and technologies aimed at succeeding in a high failure rate environment. But we do have models for high failure rate environments because when I say a high failure rate environment, what do I mean? I mean an environment where you can't pick the right solutions from the wrong ones. And the example that I like to use is venture capital. How many of you know what a venture capitalist does? Do you think they're successful? They're kind of wealthy guys. I know them. They're in California off of Sand Hill Road. They have big mansions. They seem to be doing pretty well. But here's the interesting thing about venture capitalists. They're not really experts at success. They're experts at failure. For every 100 companies they invest in, they expect 85 to 90 not to make it. But the 10 or 15 that make it, the results will far overwhelm the failure. She shows how leading companies in energy, defense, healthcare, manufacturing, finance, and other industry can leverage the principles of fast adaptation to thrive, even when the odds are against them. Costa also offers a look at what neuroscientists now know about complex problem solving. According to Costa, the more complex our jobs and lives, our governments and laws and technologies and systems become, the more erratic human behavior grows, eventually culminating in sudden collapse. It's happened before and it will happen again unless we confront the biological limitations of the human organism itself and what it is and what is not capable of at this point in time. Don't be misled into believing that the challenges you face are economic or political in nature. Exploding complexity is at the heart of our gridlock and there are successful ways to overcome gridlock and succeed. Get the watchman's rattle before it's too late and find out why over 3 million listeners tune in each week to The Costa Report, a program for thinking people because it is dedicated to getting more facts into the public dialogue. Rebecca Costa, the world's leading expert on complexity and collapse. <laughs>